Florence Nightingale is known to many as the founder of modern nursing and was the woman who defined what nursing is today. Today I will be discussing who she was, her attributes and values, and discuss the major contributions that impact modern nursing. Florence Nightingale was born on the 12th of May 1820 in Florence, Italy, to an affluent British family. She grew up in England and was well educated by her father in languages, mathematics and science, as he believed young women should be educated, contrary to the conservative views and the social norms of the time. From an early age, she expressed a desire to be a nurse, but her family was very disapproving due to their conservative beliefs about women and the poor reputation of the nursing occupation being synonymous with drug use and prostitution. Against her parents' wishes, in 1851, she went to the Institution for Protestant Deaconesses at Kaiserwerth in Germany to study nursing for several months, followed by further education in Paris before returning home to London. There, she became the head of the Institute for the Care of Sick Gentlewomen. When the Crimean War began in 1853, the reports from the war heard of poor conditions, inadequate care and extremely high death rates, and Sir Sidney Herbert, the British Secretary of War and a friend of Nightingale's, asked her to lead a team of 38 nurses to improve the conditions of the Barrack Hospital in Scutari. On arrival, she observed an overcrowded hospital with overflowing sewage, dead animals rotting in courtyards and no ventilation. She became convinced that the hospital environment had an immense impact on the mortality rates within the hospital and as a result brought order and cleanliness to the hospital. Specific areas included the kitchen, laundry, sewers, and she ventilated the wards and sanitised the equipment and bandages used on the soldiers. Nightingale would attend the duties during the day and after all the other nurses had retreated to the quarters during the night, she would do rounds with a lamp to care for her patients giving herself the name Lady with the Lamp. During the war, she used her statistical skills to monitor the impacts of the change in the environment in the Barrack Hospital. Through her efforts both in scootery and on returning to England and lobbying for change, it is said that she reduced the mortality rate from 43 to 2.2%. She became ill near the end of the war with Crimean fever, thought now to be chronic brucellosis, and on return to London she spent time recovering. On her return, she was congratulated for her efforts and gifted money, which she then used to open a nurse training school in 1859. Although due to her illness, she could not teach, so she wrote letters inspiring the students instead. She remained an invalid for most of her life thereafter, but spent her time writing letters, books and lobbying for changes to public health to improve health standards and emphasise prevention. She was constantly searching and finding ways to continually improve nursing. She died in London at the age of 90 in 1910, leaving an incredible legacy for centuries of nurses to follow. An attribute that Nightingale possessed was innovation, which is defined in the Collins Dictionary as changing the way something is done by introducing new methods or ideas. Florence Nightingale embodied the attribute of innovation every day of her nursing life in the way that she constantly researched what could be done to improve nursing. During her efforts in the Barrack Hospital, she sought to discover what was wrong and made changes which she then documented and made into objective data. Through doing this, she created evidence that by sanitising the hospital environment, it directly impacted the health of the wounded soldiers and hence decreased mortality. And in doing so, she created the first ever evidence-based practice. Another innovative characteristic she brought to nursing was the concept of holistic care with the belief that the environment can have an impact on the patient's recovery and that by prioritising prevention, it would decrease disease. Furthermore, on her return to England, she reported on her successes in the war and went on to lobby for reform of healthcare standards. By achieving these re reforms, she gained respect for the nursing profession. These findings made her famous and as a result, many people from around the world visited her to learn her methods. In addition, through her efforts to raise the reputation of nurses, she also succeeded in normalising nursing as an occupation for women, and many upper-class ladies followed in her footsteps. A value that Nightingale held as evidenced in literature was commitment. Commitment is defined in the Collins Dictionary as pledging or aligning oneself to a particular cause, action or attitude. A famous quote of hers is, Let us never consider ourselves finished nurses. We must be learning all of our lives. This exemplifies her commitment to learning and commitment to nursing as something that is never finished. She dedicated her life to nursing and, and to the professionalisation of nursing in the way that she prioritised teaching and enabling future nurses to continue what she started. It's also clear that she valued commitment through another famous quote, 
I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took an excuse. Her commitment is also evident in the way that after her successes in the war, she did not stop or slow down due to her illness. Instead, it was the beginning of her advocacy for public health and prevention of disease. Throughout her life and despite illness, she continued to work on improving nursing and exploring research, committing herself to never stop discovering what next to improve. One major contribution to today's nursing is the way Florence Nightingale changed the public perception of nursing from a lower class occupation to one with respect, and she fought for the occupation to be professionalised. This, no doubt, has led to what is now one of the most trusted professions in the world, exemplifying the importance of her advocacy. Nightingale emphasised the, the importance of interpersonal relationships and socio-political knowledge, and she used her power of popularity of the time to have an influence socially and politically, and hence change opinions of nursing and the potential nurses could have in the future. Nightingale inspired many affluent women who then continued in her teachings, and these teachings and their impact lived on with her published works, still in print today. These works include many aspects of modern nursing, for example, Notes on Nursing, What It Is and What It Is Not, in 1859, which covered topics vital to nurses today, such as confidentiality, cleanliness, observation, assessment, quality and safety. This changed the standards of nursing of the time and gave nursing the chance to be recognised as a profession due to the education and understanding required, and many aspects of these, teaching are still, these teachings are still crucial aspects of evidence-based care. Another major contribution she made to nursing was the importance of cleanliness of instruments in the hospital environment. She emphasised the need for sanitation, and by doing so and reporting on her achievements, she created the first evidence-based practice. This went on to become the standard in hospitals around the world, no doubt saving millions of lives. This was also extremely exceptional since bacterial infections had not yet been discovered, but despite this, she understood the impact of the dirty environment was having on her patients. This understanding of the environment's role in holistic care assisted her in creating the nursing meta-paradigm, which links the person, nursing, health and their environment, as pictured. In her position leading the team, she has been identified in literature as both a transformational leader in the way she found an issue and inspired change, and also as a nurse leader amongst her peers. She was not always liked by her colleagues, but many were inspired by her knowledge and found her strict but inspirational. During this leadership, along with her statistical skills, she then used her success in the war to convince government health officials to change standards in healthcare, and many came to her for advice on how to reduce fatalities in other war efforts. Florence Nightingale is an inspiration to me and undoubtedly many other young nursing students across the world. Her commitment to innovation and finding the best practice is something that resonates with me and has encouraged me to keep up with the most recent evidence to inform my practice. Furthermore, learning about her commitment to evidence has inspired me to consider participating or leading research in the future and to find new innovative ways to approach nursing. Another aspect of Nightingale's discoveries that I found meaningful was the way that she emphasised holistic care and preventative health, since this was the first notion of assessing the per person as a whole, and on reflection of this, I will ensure I am always considering the patients I care for holistically and considering the environment in which they're in. In regard to prevention rather than treatment, I will aim to use my critical thinking skills when in the clinical setting to think of any possible risks and ways to prevent harm in order to live with the best nursing practice I can. Lastly, another major admirable characteristic that I've learnt while researching Florence Nightingale was how she was a true patient advocate. Firstly, while she lobbied for change in the Barrack Hospital, but furthermore advocating for improved standards of healthcare. I will encompass this by advocating for my patients, especially those who cannot advocate for themselves, to ensure I am keeping both myself and my colleagues accountable for providing the best care possible. Thank you.